All right, so welcome everybody to the March 1st, uh, 2022 uh, Acme Materials Seminar. So I'm thrilled to have uh, Dr. Nyahanjo here at, um, at the talk. She uh, is currently a postdoctoral researcher at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Uh, she did her PhD with the Paul Canfield at Iowa State University. And uh, uh, after a postdoc at Ames, she moved to where she is now. Um, I think in, you said 2019, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's welcome her and I'm gonna hand it off with no further ado. Uh, go right ahead. Okay, thank you so much for the introduction. And I'm very grateful to talk today at uh, the University of Alabama. So today, uh, so I'm Nahyun, uh, I'm postdoctoral researcher at uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So as you can see from the background here, it has a very nice view from the uh, laboratory. So if you have a chance to do some experiment at the lab, then please do so, uh, you won't regret in many ways. So today I prepare a presentation uh, about the for the new materials era beyond silicon age by discovering understanding and manipulating quantum materials. Okay, let's get uh, started. So contents are following. Uh, first, I will try to uh, talk about what are the quantum materials and then move on to explaining about a quantum material, so-called topological material, and then move on to recent uh, condensed matter physics question about how can we manipulate such a topological state of matter? Uh, in, in, um, in particular, today I would focus on spin degrees of freedom and lattice degree of freedom tuning of the topological state of matter. And then I will finish the talk by giving you a brief overview of future research. So human society's progression is highly related to the materials discovery, understanding, and its application. So for example, uh, we often describe our prehistory based on materials like stone age, bronze age, and iron age. And now we are in the edge of a silicon age, which is characterized by the rapid growth of semiconducting uh, industry. Uh, and of course, during this age, we are uh, uh, owing to lots of uh, uh, effort from the researchers. Now we have a better understanding of the materials uh, as well in general. And now we are moving on to uh, quantum materials age. Then the question is, what are the quantum materials? The quantum materials are the materials in which uh, the extraordinary effect of quantum mechanics give rise to exotic and often incredible uh, properties. And these incredible properties uh, include um, magnetism, superconductivity, uh, topological, uh, topo topology, and many others. But among all these uh, uh, quantum materials, the symmetry uh, plays a very important role. So even though symmetry plays an important role in uh, science in general, but today, uh, uh, today I would like to focus on uh, condensed, uh, ma condensed matter physics uh, perspective of symmetry. Okay, so um, so far the in condensed matter physics phase transition have been understood within the Landau picture by establishing other parameter uh, by, uh, by via continuous symmetry breaking, for example. Uh, magnetic ordering uh, has been understood with the broken notation symmetry. Superconductivity was understood with the broken gauge symmetry. Uh, however, uh, recently there are the material, uh, a new material class that cannot be understood with this spontaneous symmetry breaking picture has been realized. And that is topological materials. Uh, so topological materials are the materials that oh, cannot be understood with the spontaneous symmetry breaking picture, but it can be understood with uh, um, some uh, mathematical uh, term of the topology. So let's first uh, uh, get to know about uh, what is topology. So by now, many of you or all of you are, are very familiar uh, with the uh, 
uh, with this kind of uh, topological uh, concept where uh, muffin is different from donut, but donut is the same as a uh, coffee cup uh, in topological concept. That's because unless you uh, make a physical breaking of the muffin, uh, you cannot just uh, simply gradually change the muffin to change the shape to the, uh, the donut. But if you can uh, just continuously change the donut shape, then you can actually make a donut to the coffee cup. So in that sense, uh, in topological manner, muffin is different from donut, but donut is the same as a coffee cup. And the mathematical way of uh, um, determining two different topological materials here is using a mathematical term of genus. So genus is basically the mathematical, uh, is a surface integration of, of, of the Gaussian curvature. So when there is no hole in the material like muffin, then the genus number is equal to zero. But then if there is a hole in a material, then the genus number is equal to one. Uh, of course, when it gets to the pretzel with the three holes, then the, its genus number is equal to three. So uh, this is a concept, topological concept uh, in the real space. But then uh, recently researchers realized that this concept also can be applied to the case-based area. And then uh, in here, the mathematical way of distinguishing topologically trivial state from a topological non-trivial state, vice versa, is using a topological index, so-called the TK and N number or turn number. Uh, or if we consider spin of coupling, then we uh, get to the Z2 invariant as a topological index. Uh, what it means is basically when uh, the Z2 invariant number is equal to zero, that means it's topologically uh, trivial. But when it, uh, the Z2 invariant is equal to one, that means it's topologically non-trivial. So this concept has been uh, predicted from uh, uh, um, first uh, two-dimensional free electron gap model, but then uh, with a lot of effort from the uh, theorists, uh, now we know that this concept can also apply to the three-dimensional uh, materials as well. So let's say we have a material and this material uh, is uh, topologically non-trivial, uh, but usually the material is facing a vacuum or some uh, air which is topologically trivial state outside. But as I mentioned, one cannot change the topological state uh, continuously from trivial to non-trivial or one topological state to another state without having certain uh, breakthrough. And in this three-dimensional material case, such a breakthrough is basically the bend touching point uh, in the uh, case space. And if that bend touch crossing happens at the surface of the material, though about the uh, outside the vacuum environment and the material itself is insulator, kept out, then that's called a topological uh, insulator. And three-dimensional analogs to that, uh, where the bend touching point is not just at the surface of the material, but all in the three-dimensional uh, uh, three dimensional bulk state, then that is called a Dirac semi-metal, and, and also while semi-metal is a also the three-dimensional uh, analogs of the topological material. So, so far I tried to uh, talk, explain about topological material, which you cannot be understand with the spontaneous symmetry breaking picture, uh, but uh, with the mathematical term of topology. But still this material symmetry plays a very important role. So what it means is, uh, so for the topological insulator, uh, such a um, bend touching point linear dispersion is protected by time reverser uh, symmetry. And for the Dirac semi metal, such a bend touching point in the bulk is uh, protected by time reverser symmetry as well as inversion symmetry. Uh, and then if uh, you break either time reversal symmetry or inversion symmetry of the Dirac semi-metal, then degenerated uh, so the Dirac point separated into two, and that is called a wild semi-metal. Uh, here, the question is then uh, whether only time reversal and inversion symmetries are matter, and the answer is actually no. The underlying crystal symmetry also plays 
very important role in these materials. For example, cadmium-3 arsenic-2 is known as a tiroxanine metal, uh, which has a four-board rotation symmetry in its crystalline structure. And uh, theoretical studies suggest that if you break the, uh, such a four-board rotation symmetry, then you can change its material from tiroxanine metal to a uh, topological okay. insulating state. So here we can see that obviously the uh, crystalline symmetry of the material also uh, plays a very important role in this topological material. Okay, uh, and then uh, the, 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 uh, at the very beginning, uh, TFT calculation was done on these three materials, and these are the first three three dimensional topological insulator predicted from the TFT calculation. And here, as you can see, there's a bulk conduction band with a high intensity, and there's a bulk balance band uh, with high intensity. Uh, not intensity TFT calculation, but uh, and then in between two. Uh, there's a linear dispersion from the surface uh, surface band, and uh, now with the uh, with a lot of effort and with the symmetry indicators, uh, researchers found out that there are about thousands of topological materials exist uh, in the material system. So so far, I talked about uh, topological material, and uh, without um, condensed matter physics background, I do understand it's uh, not easy to follow. But hope uh, at least uh, by now I, I could uh, give you uh, three take-home messages. The first take-home message is the topological materials are described by the topological invariant, uh, and second, still symmetries are uh, very important in this material. And three, uh, a distinct feature uh, of this topological state of matter is the singing the linear dispersion of the band in the material system. So this linear dispersion is the, the experimental signature that we are we will try to uh, uh, look for uh, in the later uh, of the talk today. Okay, so now we understand uh, the topological material system uh, theoretically and uh, with a lot of effort, uh, we know what kind of materials are possibly be a uh, topological material. Then now the question is, how do we uh, experimentally prove such a topological state of matter? And the first thing that we need to do then is uh, growing the material to study. And that's actually uh, the amazing part of doing experimental condensed matter physics uh, because uh, um, you can create the system in your lab and then you can poke the material or you can stretch your, you can all, do all kinds of things uh, in your lab with your hand and then measure the physical property and study some exotic and noble physics out of it. So this is the very exciting uh, uh, part of experimental condensed matter physics, at least I'm thinking that way. And then, um, okay, so then the first thing that we need to do is growing the crystal. How, uh, and there are various ways of growing crystals, but today I would like to um, introduce you one of a, a very powerful way of growing single crystals, and that is called the solution uh, method. So perhaps many of you are not familiar with, but uh, perhaps you have experience with the growing rock candy uh, when you were young, or you may have experience with the growing salt crystal out of water. Uh, Okay, but uh, so basically the concepts are uh, very, uh, concepts are the same. Uh, instead, in the real laboratory, you need to deal with uh, uh, more uh, different materials with the high melting temperatures and need to consider uh, some safety issues and so forth and do not have, uh, many of the cases does not have a uh, uh, exact uh, recipe to cook the material. Uh, but uh, it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's still the same kind of uh, concept. And today I would like to uh, show you how to uh, do the, uh, this solution method uh, with the bismuth selenide. So today our target is bismuth 2 selenide 3, which is uh, a topological insulator. And the first uh, thing that we need to do to grow the material is to try to, uh, try to look at the phase uh, diagram. So the left side, uh, uh, graph is so-called a phase diagram. So phase diagram is a kind of a map. So when you want to go uh, to a place, uh, 
uh, from your car, current location to the place, then one way is just to try and error to get there. But if you have a map, then it will be much easier to get to the points. So same kind of concept with the base diagram. We have uh, we know uh, how to get to the uh, grow the material. So this is base diagram again, and then the left side. How do we read? Is the left side is hundred percent of bismuth, and then right side is hundred percent of selenium. Uh, and then uh, since the bismuth two selenium three is at forty percent of bismuth and sixty percent of selenium, so it's uh, uh, right here with the line compound at the sixty percent of selenium up here. And um, in order to understand this better, the blue phase here is a one phase regime and with a liquid, and the white phase here are the two phase regime. So, for example, in this box here uh, is a two phase regime overlap and right side of material. So, basically, bismuth 1 1 compound as well as bismuth 2 3 compound, selenide uh, 2 3 compound exists in, in this box here. And the left side box this is also two phase regime with the left and right. So four three compound is an, and, and the one one compound exists in this box. Same for this uh, triangle, quite triangle box here, then it's left and right. So it's liquid and also uh, bismuth two and selenium three compound exist in this box. And how do we um, grow the material is if, uh, we start with the Starting stoichiometry, which is marked as this red uh, arrow here, and then put the material into a crucible. And then we heat it up above this liquid line. Here I said uh, 7 tenth, then everything will melt. And, what, uh, and then while we are slowly cool down the, uh, this uh, solution, then we started to grow the uh, bismuth 2 selenium 3 compound. And you don't cool down all the way down to room temperature to avoid the growing other phases and solidifying all the liquid. Rather, you stop above this uh, uh, 610 temperature. And this is actually a real life example of my previous advisor uh, taking the growth out from the furnace. So, uh, and then, then you have a crystal and a liquid outside. You take out and then you flip it and then you uh, spin it. Then you can separate the uh, nice crystals from the liquid uh, outside or solution outside. And this is a way that we can get a lot of uh, many uh, crystals uh, using uh, this solution uh, method. Okay, so now we have a material. And now the question is, uh, how do we uh, realize, uh, I think I have a, Question in the chat. You do, but it's for the question period. Question period. Yeah, so you can just wait till ah, the end. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Right. Uh, okay. So then now the question is, uh, how do we then know this material is a topological uh, material or not? Uh, and there are, again, many uh, other ways, but today I would like to explain uh, with the uh, angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy, so called RPS. So, uh, this uh, RPS, maybe many of you are were, uh, not familiar with, but uh, Albert, so do you know? Uh, so, but many of you, I guess all of you know about the Albert Einstein. But do you know how he got the Nobel Prize? Uh, the, the way uh, he got the Nobel Prize was uh, based on the photoelectric effects. So perhaps uh, this is a very familiar experiment for many of you. So here there are two metal plates. And if you charge uh, this with uh, uh, negative uh, charges, then there is a gap between two. But then if you shine the light, then the photoelectron will come out. Therefore, the gap will uh, will get closer, and that is the a basic uh, proof of a principle of a um, photoelectric effect. And so, this kind of concept can be used in modern uh, experimental technique, and that is the uh, angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy, so called RPS. So you have a material, and now you shine the light. Then the elect uh, the photoelectron will come out. 
plot with the information of momentum and energy. And then, uh, and, uh, and then with the uh, hemispheric analyzer with the different uh, field, you can map out the momentum and energy information of the material because of the momentum and energy conservation. So this is a way of uh, studying uh, the band structure of the material. Okay, and then, uh, and then this is the experimental results uh, of the uh, R piece. Then you can clearly see there's a bulk balance, a conduction band, and then there's a bulk balance band. And then in between, there's a, a, a linear band, a linear band in between, uh, which proves that it is indeed the topological insulator. And <clears throat> After several years of studies, now we know that there are many other systems also shows this linear topological non-trivial feature in the material. Okay, so uh, so far uh, I talked about uh, topological materials and how to experimentally prove, and actually it has been proved in many uh, materials so far. Then the so now the uh, current question of the field is moving toward to how actually can we uh, manipulate the topological state of matter. Uh, regarding that, I'm trying to explain you with the four fundamental degrees of freedom, uh, which means lattice degree of freedom, charge degrees of freedom spin degrees of freedom and orbital uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, so if you uh, think about a lattice, pra lattice uh, parameter tuning, then you can think of a hydrostatic pressure, then the correlation of the material change that can affect the uh, material. But also if you think about keeping uh, some directional stress on the material, then, uh, then the symmetry of the material can change. And that actually can effectively uh, uh, tune the topological state of the matter because the topological materials are very uh, is uh, the symmetry is important uh, in topological material system. Uh, for the spin part, uh, if we have some magnetism in the material, then it will break the time reversal symmetry. So that is a way of tuning the topological state of the matter. But also, if you have a certain uh, ordering with the spins, then the symmetry will break, and that will also uh, manipulate uh, topological state of matter and uh, and so forth. So this is a very good tuning parameter to tune the topological state of matter. And today I would like to show you uh, first the spin uh, degrees of freedom to tune the topological state, and then later on the lattice degree of freedom to tune the material state, topological state. Uh, so, so at uh, at first, uh, how researchers view this problem was basically, uh, let's have a topological insulator, and then we adopt the material with a magnetic atom, or uh, let's say sparkle the magnetic atoms on the surface of the material, topological insulator. Then what we expect is basically uh, then the uh, breaking of time reversal symmetry will open the gap like this. And this was theoretically predicted and experimentally proved like uh, with this ARPES data. There's a, a gap in the uh, a band uh, as you can see from here. So perhaps it's very, uh, it's not easy to see the gap then the better way of looking at it with is using a uh, energy dispersive curve to understand. So to better understand, so this is the binding energy and this is the binding energy and uh, uh, x axis is intensity, but with a different k point of the uh, k point over here. So let's say at this uh, the SGD line, we expect uh, one peak intensity peak and goes down, and then another intensity peak comes in and then goes down. And that's what you are seeing here. There's an intensity peak here down, and then another intensity peak comes in and then goes down. And as you go uh, toward to the center point, we expect this band goes down, and then uh, the bottom band goes up and that's what you're seeing down and then up. And when it crosses at the center, if there's a no gap, then what we expect is only a single peak, but the result shows that it has a two peaks, which means there is a gap in the material because of magnetic uh, atom doping in the uh, topological insulator. So this, 
was this was great, but then uh, the question is, uh, is this it? Uh, is there any way that breaking the time reversal symmetry in topological material give rise to another uh, noble state of matter? And the uh, answer is uh, yes. So one of the uh, recent uh, very uh, popular example of this uh, is manganese prism two n tellurium three n plus one system. Uh, for this material, uh, have a uh, two building blocks. One is a quintuple layer with the five uh, layer with the tellurium bismuth, tellurium bismuth, tellurium, uh, so-called quintuple layer. And another building block is with manganese atom in between. So it's a tellurium, bismuth, tellurium, and then magnetic atom, manganese in between, and then the tellurium, bismuth, tellurium. So this is called the set layer. So when is when n is equal to one, then it's uh, uh, the repetition of a set layer. And when n is equal to two, then it's a repetition of one set layer and one quintuple layer and repeat. And for n equals three system, it's a, a one set layer and two quintuple layer, and then it's repeating units. So this is the manganese bismuth two and tellurium three n plus one system. And why this is exciting? That's because uh, this material, when it is above the magnetic transition, then it is uh, a topological insulator, uh, means there's a, a linear dispersion without gap in the surface state. And then, uh, but what's Exciting was when it starts to order antiferromagnetically, especially A type uh, means uh, there in this layer, all the spins are down, and the other layer, all the spins are up, and then down, up, down. So, this is the, called the so called A type antiferromagnetism in this material. And if that happens, then of course the time reversal symmetry will break, but then new symmetry comes up with half translation asymmetry. Uh, in that case, then uh, we uh, in that case, uh, in the case, then we expect a new uh, a topological uh, non-trivial state. But then at the uh, at the surface, the inversion symmetry breaks, so still there's open a gap. But then in in this open gap status, uh, researchers suggest that it's a great uh, platform to uh, detect the action uh, insulating behavior in the material. So with this, uh, with this, uh, what we are looking for is above the transition temperature. We are looking for a linear dispersion without gap. But then below the transition temperature, we are looking for a material. Uh, we are looking for the gapped, uh, uh, gapped band in the RPS data. And there are uh, many experiments has been done on this material. And for the n equal one material, we see people saw a, a large gap in the material. Uh, though maybe it's hard to see from the low data, but then you can clearly see with the EDC curve with the two peaks. Uh, so this shows a very nice uh, indication of the gap in the magnetic state, but then the problem was this one uh, did not close the gap uh, at the magnetic transition temperature. And also high uh, resolution RPS day, uh, measurement was done on this material system. And for the low temperature, uh, it's very hard to see from the raw data, but then the first derivative data clearly showed the gap. And with the energy dispersive curve, if you follow the peaks, then one goes like this and the other one goes like that. So definitely there's a gap in between. So uh, it, is, uh, it is very uh, exciting to see such a gap in the ordered state, but the size of the gap is way, way smaller than uh, what is expected is from the theoretical point of view. And another problem was is, uh, the gap closes, uh, gap did not close at the transition temperature, rather it closes at the temperature way, way above the transition temperature, which was 150 Kelvin. So, uh, so it seems like uh, there's a certain indication that this kind of physics, uh, we may have a chance to see the action is latent behavior, but it does not really matching with the theoretical prediction. So it is uh, still the controversial. And the uh, reason suggested about this uh, controversy between the theory and experiment is uh, one, maybe there's a difference in a spin order at the surface, or there's a orbital mixing in this material or the imperfection of the material system creates such issue. But uh, still, uh, these are under uh, study. 
okay, that was a topological insulator case. What about topological semi-metal, which is a three-dimensional uh, case of the topological material? So there are several material systems that has been predicted uh, and uh, experimentally recognized as a magnetic uh, topological semi-metal, uh, such as cerium, aluminum, germanium, cobalt-2, magnet gallium, cobalt-3, tin-2, sulfur-2. All these materials use a very exciting uh, uh, physics and uh, that's really great. But then there's a problem. So if you can see these dots, these are the wild points in the material. Uh, and you can see in, in a brilliant zone, there are so many uh, wild points exist uh, in the system. Same for the other uh, two material systems as well. Uh, that will, that uh, does make uh, researchers hard to have uh, hard to understand intrinsic physical property of such a topological wild uh, point wild semi metal uh, in the system. So what we want is to uh, uh, try to find a material system that has the minimal number number of wild points in the system, like a hydrogen model uh, uh, in a topological semi metal. So with the, that uh, with that uh, with um collaboration with the DFT calculate, calculators, we found, uh, theorists, we found that uh, European cadmium to arsenic 2 can be a really great example for that. Uh, so for example, this material, when it's ordered antiferromagnetically in plane, then it's a topological insulator. But if it orders ferromagnetically in plane, then it has only two pairs of wire points. And when it gets to uh, ferromagnetic order out of a plane, then it's even amazing. It has only one uh, pair of wild points in the material. So uh, this was a very uh, exciting uh, theoretical prediction for us. And But then in real life, um, based on the previous um, experimental paper, uh, we realized that this material's magnetic ground state is antiferromagnetic in plane. So it's a topological insulator. Uh, however, uh, recent study shows that uh, when people apply the magnetic field and then polarize the spin all out of the uh, plane direction, then uh, with the quantum oscillation results, so quantum oscillation is, is uh, though I didn't explain in the beginning, it's uh, another way of looking at the uh, band structure of the material. And from this experiment, uh, researchers realized that but still, with the magnetic field, we may be able to um, have the one pair of wild point in, in this uh, material system. And also, a recent RPC study that has been done on um, above the transition temperature, uh, not, uh, not other the state, but still uh, researchers claim that uh, there's some kind of spin fluctuation going on, and that is ferromagnetic uh, spin fluctuation. Therefore, uh, they could stabilize the material uh, with uh, uh, one pair of wire point in the system, as you can see with this crossing here and the Fermi arcs that connects those uh, wire points. So this is very exciting. And it, all this thing uh, indicates the, how important it is to stabilize the ferromagnetic ground state uh, in this material. So we did a several um, uh, attempt of growth, and we uh, finally made the material with a, a ferromagnetic uh, magnetic ground state uh, in the material system. Uh, as you can clearly see from the magnetization data as a function of the temperature. Uh, though it wasn't uh, uh, out of a plane ferro, but still it, uh, it's uh, in plane ferro with only two pairs of wire points into the system. So we got very excited and then we measured the RPS. Uh, then we unfortunately, since the chemical potential has been shifted, so the wild points are way up here. So that we did not able to see the such a wild point from our RPS experiment. But the, this is not uh, not the end of the world. Uh, we realized that uh, this material is actually a very rare case of showing uh, band selective sharpening and the splitting of the uh, band uh, due to the ferromagnetic transition. So what it means, this is uh, above the transition temperature and this is below the transition temperature Fermi surface data. And from here, you can uh, see that uh, below the transition temperature, there's a very sharp inner band popping up. Uh, and then if we make a cut through this dashed line and then plot with energy, 
then you can see uh, that uh, the bands above the transition temperature, and again, same kind of a cut, and then this is a below the transition temperature. And here you can clearly see the band shifted quite a lot. And then the, there's a sharpening of the band happening as well, but it's not for every uh, bands, but for the selective ones. Um, so this is because of the CP majority and minority bands splitting and then having a different scattering uh, rate uh, in the system. So for this kind of a ferromagnetic, uh, whenever you have a ferromagnetic material, then you many times expect the huge drop of resistivity because of loss of spin disorder. But uh, for the spectral signal, it was really hard to see this kind of uh, uh, feature so far. That is because many of the case it's a uh, um, uh, three D three uh, sorry three D um, transition metal system that interact with many other electrons around. On the other hand, this was the uh, this magnetism was uh, due to the europium atom, which is a four F um, uh, localized uh, state. Therefore, we could see such a sharpening of the band as well as a splitting of the band due to the, uh, this uh, ferromagnetic order. Okay, so so far I talked about a uh, recent research effort on um, tuning the topological material with the uh, spin degrees of uh, freedom. Uh, so uh, in other words, magnetic uh, material tuning of a topological state of matter. And from now on, uh, I would like to move on a more recent uh, research effort to try to tune the topological state of matter uh, with the lattice degree of freedom tuning uh, of the system. Okay, so um, there are various ways of uh, tune the uh, lattice parameter. Uh, one way is uh, a doping. So doping is basically you have an atom here and you substitute this atom with um, a smaller size or bigger size of the uh, elements. Then you can create a, a changes in lattice parameter. And, the, there are pros and cons in this way. Uh, one big advantage is uh, from doping, you can actually have a large effect of uh, tuning uh, lattice parameter. On the other hand, the great disadvantage of doping is if you uh, dope with some other material, it's basically you're putting impurity in the system and that will make us hard to understand its intrinsic physical property of the material. Then the other way of uh, tuning the lattice parameter is actually using some kind of mechanical stress or uh, pressure. And this is, actually, uh, this is a very um, powerful way of uh, tuning the materials as well. So for example, three years ago or two years ago, uh, room temperature superconductivity was report, re reported uh, in, uh, by giving a uniaxial uh, stress on the material, which was 267 gigapascal. Uh, so then changed the boiling state of matter to a new room temperature superconductive, superconductor. And also for the iron, uh, that's uh, one case, but also for the iron-based superconductors, uh, people suppress the spin uh, density wave and then uh, it, Found the high temperature superconductivity uh, with upon applying uh, uniaxial pressure on the material. And recently, a new uh, technical development has been done uh, that can give a uniaxial stress on the material system. And from this uh, new technique, now we have uh, even more tuning knob to uh, manipulate the system. And uh, yeah, for for example, a uh, recent study on strontium lucinate, they start with the superconductivity and by giving a uniaxial stress, now they saw a uh, change in the material's uh, ground state to the spin density wave system. So it's very powerful uh, tuning knob. And this is particularly very important for the RPS measurement because the RPS is a, a surface science. Uh, and if it's a hydrostatic uh, pressure, then you need a pressure for all surfaces. So therefore you do not have any exposed surface that you can probe the electronic structure of the material. On the other hand, uh, by having this uniaxial technique, 
so you have a stress only along the one direction, then you have the exposed surface of the material, and that way we could we can observe the RPS data on the material. Okay, and this is a, a recent example of a tuning topological state of matter uh, with, uh, on the zirconium pentatellurite. The zirconium pentatellurite is known as a, a weak topological insulator. So I uh, didn't mention this before. The difference between the weak topological insulator and strong topological insulator is a, a strong topological insulator, uh, you have a surface state in every surfaces of the material. But weak topological insulator, you have a, a such a, a surface state not at the every surfaces, but only at the certain surfaces. Uh, so since this material is a uh, is a, a weak a topological insulator at the ambient condition, so and there is a no strain, then you see the gap in the material. But then, and then if you apply tensile strain, means uh, pulling the material, then it goes uh, to the right side of this graph, then you start to see the larger gap in the material. But what's interesting was when you apply the compressive strain, then uh, you started to have a Dirac semi-metal and then the strong topological insulating uh, insulator. So that here you see a uh, gap closes uh, with the compressive strain. So this is uh, this recent study is the first uh, uh, first paper that shows uh, the topological phase transition can also happen using uh, lattice uh, as a tuning parameter, and we also tried uh, on a strain uh, experiment on a uh, hopium pentatellurite, uh, which has isostructure isostructure to the uh, zirconium pentatellurite. Uh, in this case, uh, we did uh, we did not see the changes around the Fermi energy. So this is a uh, no strain. This is compressive strain, and the right side is a tensile stress one. And then, uh, but what's exciting was around the one eb below the Fermi energy. Uh, here, the band has a gap. But then, with the compressive strain, we started to have a linear uh, band crossings, one up here and one down here. Same for this side. And then have a connection between these linear points too, which is very exciting uh, to see such band crossings in the material with the compressive strain. And whether this is a topologically trivial or non-trivial, we are currently under investigation with the DFT calculation. And what's also interesting was uh, when we give uh, tensile stress. So even though the band structure itself did uh, not have uh, uh, much changes, but the background signal, uh, if you compare from compressive stress to the zero to the tensile, the background signal increased quite a lot. And then the band uh, intensity itself uh, is decreased with uh, tensile stress. So this indicate this indicate that uh, not just the band changes with the stress given on the material, but also uh, there's a, a, some kind of a correlation effect in the material by having uniaxial stress uh, on the material system. So this is also uh, something very uh, we are excited about, and we are also working with the theorists to, to understand better about uh, this uh, correlation feature in the material system. So, so far I talk about a uh, spin degree of freedom, freedom to tune the material system as well as lattice degree of freedom uh, to tune the material system. And this just begun and uh, it's, there's a lot of opportunity that we can uh, uh, explore more to manipulate topological state of matter with this uh, for fundamental degrees of freedom. So today I talk about separately spin degrees of freedom, lattice degree of freedom to tune the material. But um, in the later we can, uh, since all are connected by uh, combining these two, it will be really exciting to see some new uh, physics phenomena can uh, appear in the, uh, with the tuning of the uh, topological state. And also I didn't mention about uh, effective uh, symmetry breaking with the lattice. Uh, parameter tuning today, but that's also a great way of uh, moving forward uh, about uh, uh, doing uh, manipulating topological state of matter. 
Okay, so uh, so with a lot of uh, effort from the researchers, and now we saw very exciting physics from this material, like a quantum uh, a, a quantum hole effects, and also with a lot of efforts, now we are approaching to a new applications like a topological transistor or topological quantum computers. Uh, uh, people are working on that direction. Uh, so I would just say quantum materials uh, era, uh, I believe quantum materials era is near and it, it is the, it, the future is very bright. So with that, uh, these are the references and I would like to finish my talk of, I think uh, acknowledge all my collaborators uh, throughout uh, US and Canada and also uh, Europe. And this research is were funded by US, US DOE and DOE EFRC, uh, CATS EFRC and uh, uh, DOE Quantum Information Center, uh, Quantum Systems Accelerator and a Golden and Perry Moore Foundation. Uh, with that, I would like to finish my talk. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay, thank you so much for your talk, Nahyan. Um, thank you. I will start while everyone collects their thoughts. Uh, I'll start with the the question in the uh, in the chat. Um, the question was, uh, can you suggest a self-contained review paper or textbook that explains topological properties in case space? You know, definitions, theorems, proofs, stuff like that. Do you have mm -hmm. a, a a place to start? <laughs> uh, so the question is, uh, can I suggest a self-contained review paper or, well, or, or? Yeah, I mean, and if not self-contained, maybe something where they can get started and start exploring. Where would you start from? Uh, where I start from? Uh, that's actually a really good question <laughs> uh, about the topological properties. There is actually some uh, many review papers out there nowadays already about the topological materials, uh, as uh, it's been studied for a uh, decade, right? A, a decade right now. Right. Uh, yeah, and the, uh, the starting point was always uh, uh, starting from um, um, understanding the topology in the case basis uh, with the quantum hole effect and quantum, uh, uh, yeah, quantum hole effect, quantum spin hole effect. And that way, uh, it's better to uh, it has a better uh, comprehensive understanding of the topological material that way. Uh, but and there are some uh, review papers about the semi uh, metals too, and now started to have some magnetic semi metal review papers coming out too. Uh, but it will be great if you, uh, in the near future to have some kind of um, lattice parameter uh, tuning of the topological system. And uh, considering that in, in the aspect of a symmetry point of view, as well as a correlation point of view, would be a, a really great way to go. Hope I addressed the question. <laughs> okay. All right, I will get more in the chat box if, if there wasn't, but uh, let's see. Uh, Mahesh, why don't, why don't you go? I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, uh, hi, uh, it's a very uh, excellent talk. Thank you uh, for giving us perspective on this topological material system. And my question is regarding this magnetically, magnes doped uh, bismetallaride that you, you had in one slide, right? Where you said uh, having magnes layer on certain order would give us this action insulator. Uh, could you please uh, go back to that slide and, you know, give us some more kind of uh, perspective from physics, a physics point of view, that why manganese doped bismuth uh, is spatial in this case. Well, what is happening here? Yeah, here in this case. So is it true for manganese alone or it can be any, any magnetic uh, atom that can induce this kind of axion behavior? Uh, so here the symmetry, so the magnetism is important, but also the, uh, the, the symmetry that created from the uh, spin is uh, matter too. It means like uh, this, uh, uh, if it's a different type of mag uh, magnetic structure in the material system, then uh, the symmetry that we want for the action insulator will not, uh, will not exist. So uh, yeah, you can try, you can, we can try with the other uh, 
magnetic atoms uh, like uh, uh, cobalt or iron. But then the question is whether those uh, atoms would align as a, a type antiferromagnetically order or not is a uh, question mark. Yeah. Yeah, I have a similar question. So this is theoretical concept concept diagram right here, the one you are showing. Right, 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 right. But in experiment, this uh, I think uh, having this manganese atom segregate at certain location is extremely mm. challenging, right? Extremely challenging, yes. yes. So what do you suggest? I think this is this can be one of those material system that can only be deemed as like a theoretical met, uh, system, right? Not experimental because if you can't maintain this order in this like particular order, you will never realize axion insulator, right? Is that true? Is that a true true statement? Mm, I'm not sure if I understand what your question. Uh, no, I means like... because in experiment it's gonna be hard to realize this order, yes, yes, right? Yes. You, you you agree? We all agree, and also. Yeah. Defects because this is for pure system, right? For defects yeah. and other do other impurities might play a bigger role here, right? Right, 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 right. In experiment, so mm -hmm. yeah, but then uh, yeah, so it is very challenging material to grow without defects. In this case, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, mm -hmm. the segregation of the manganese atom in the places yeah. and also yeah. can have several. Uh, this is n equal one, n equal one, but there are n equal two, n equal three. So there are all, all kinds of uh, mm. effects can happen in this material. Mm, so yeah. Recently, people are working on uh, trying to make this material with thin film, and I think they in that side they have a better control of the materials nowadays. Mm. Hopefully that way we have a better chance of studying it. But also, people started to make a very very uh, like a thin it down the material. And then with a very, very small flake, then mm. uh, you can, it's, I cannot say it's uh, always uh, exclude all those the defects in the material, but there's a chance that you have a little clean system in a very small scale of the material system. Okay. okay. That way, yes, that way then it has a better chance of uh, studying the, uh, the exciting physics from there too. And actually there's like your paper came out a few uh, weeks or months ago, uh, by being a very thin flake of the material and see some kind of interesting quantum hall effect in the material system. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. What was what was the nail temperature of this material? Uh, the nail temperature of n equal one system is I think a 24 Kelvin ish. And then as it gets to the n equal two, n equal three, it gets lower. So it gets to 11 with the n equal three system. So some of these defects, as long as it's pretty pure, some of these defects, the effect will be mitigated by freezing them out at those temperatures, I think, from an experimental point of view. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Yafe, you have a question, why don't you go? Uh, yeah, I have a question about the uh, semi-metal part. Mm -hmm. So you can use the spin and the lattice, static spin and static lattice control to uh, manipulate the topological properties. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, can you use the, um, for example, ferromagnetic resonance to excite coherent magna, so you can control the topological property of the system? Mm. That's actually a very interesting point uh, I haven't thought about. But yes, I think uh, that way also you can uh, effectively control the symmetry of the material. And uh, that is also an exciting way of uh, going forward, I think. But I'm not sure whether that kind of study has been done so far or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Let's see anybody else got any questions? Well then let's, uh, let's thank our speaker again. Well, I'll do it, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you.